Ram Janaki Viva Panchami is being observed today in Janakpur Dham. Also in this edition of Kantipur News, we have updates about the lapses in security management at the airports of Nepal, issues of sugarcane farmers, Israel's killing of three hostages and the English Premier League. Good morning, I'm Praram Badahal. Let's begin with the main stories. Main day of Biva Panchami being observed amidst much fanfare in Janakpur Dham today. Devotees throng to celebrate the wedding between Ram and Sita. Winter session of the House of Representatives uncertain because of dispute related to appointment of Secretary General. Political parties yet to hold talks. Three Israeli hostages mistakenly killed by Israeli soldiers in Gaza while holding a white cloth. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu says military pressure will continue. Hamas denies negotiations unless aggression starts. And Barcelona's winless run stretches to three matches, held at a one all draw by Valencia at the Spanish La Liga. Viva Panchami, which falls on Margar Shukla Panchami as per the Hindu calendar, is being observed with much fanfare in Janakpur Dham today. The celebration commemorates the wedding anniversary of Lord Ram and Goddess Sita in the ancient kingdom of Mithila Janakpur Dham. Devotees have gathered in Janakpur to observe Biva Panchami, the festival which marks the wedding between Ram and Sita. A wedding procession is taken out from Janaki Temple and the procession moves around the town. Devotees from various parts of the country as well as from India have arrived in Janakpur for the festival. Biva Panchami is celebrated annually by re-enacting the marriage ceremony of Ram and Sita as mentioned in Hindu epic Ramayan. Madhya Province government has declared a public holiday in all eight districts of the province to observe the festival. Relatives of two youth who had died after being hit by a heavy vehicle have protested at Ghorai of Tang since early morning, seeking justice for the deceased. Bisal GC of Jimruk Rural Municipality, Ward No. 4, Putan, and Sagar KC of Nobahini Rural Municipality, Ward No. 6, were killed after their motorcycle was hit by a heavy vehicle. Family members of the deceased have resorted to protest after they were not provided with appropriate compensation. The vehicle operator and the families of the deceased had held a dialogue throughout yesterday, but they failed to reach an agreement. The heavy vehicle travelling from Tulsipur to Ghurai had hit the motorcycle at Ghurai 10, Zharbaira Chok, Friday night. GC and KC then breathed their last while undergoing treatment in Ghurai. Police has arrested vehicle driver Ishwar Buddha of Rolpa Runti Gadi, Ward No. 9. The Narangand Mugling Road section will remain obstructed for four hours every day from 23rd of December for the construction of a bridge. The hill in the area is said to be cut down for the construction of a bridge crossing the Twin River. The authorities of the project have said that the road section will remain obstructed for three weeks from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. A meeting between the concerned authorities had been held at the Chitton District Administration in this regard. The section had been obstructed last year as well to expand the road. The obstruction of the road section during the main travelling hours of the day will affect the passengers who leave and arrive Kathmandu. Winter session of the parliament has gone uncertain after the recommendation for appointment of the Secretary General of the Parliament Secretariat was drawn into controversies. Prior to this, the government had decided to call the winter session of the parliament by the second week of December. However, the political parties have yet to hold any discussion in this regard. The recent controversy regarding the recommendation for appointment of a new Secretary General at the Parliament Secretariat and no discussion between the government and stakeholders have left the session of the Parliament uncertain. The Parliament Secretariat has said that the government has not initiated any talks regarding the Parliament session. Despite the main opposition, CPNUML calling for the Parliament session at the earliest for formulation of important laws, the government has remained indifferent. 
Members of the ruling parties have also said that the appointment of the Secretary General of the Parliament Secretariat is yet to conclude and discussions have not been held regarding the Parliament session. At a time when the government is in a state of dilemma regarding the Parliament session, meetings of the parliamentary thematic committees have also not been effective. Dialogues held by Parliament Speaker Devraj Khimire with the Chief Webs and Webs of Political Parties represented at the Parliament have also not been productive. Failure in proceeding with works related to formulation of laws has drawn the, the performance of the Speaker and the Parliamentarians into controversies. Sugarcane cultivated by farmers have started drying up in the fields. However, the government has yet to allocate the minimum support price for the cash crop. The government must have allocated the minimum support price for sugarcane during the farming season. Although it is already the harvesting season, the government, sugarcane farmers and sugar industries have not held a meeting yet. This has delayed the allocation of the minimum support price. The entities associated with sugarcane farmers have said that the minimum support price per quintal of sugarcane must be set at 845 rupees, citing rise in production cost, which was 610 rupees last year. The sugar industries, however, have not agreed to this. Meanwhile, government officials claim that the minimum support price will be fixed soon after holding talks with the sugarcane farmers and sugar industries. The government provides subsidy of 70 rupees per quintal of sugarcane to the farmers. However, the authority has dues of 520 million rupees from last year. The Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development has already presented the document to the Ministry of Finance. However, a decision has yet to be made. In the meantime, there has been rise in the number of sugarcane farmers who have started quitting the occupation because of lack of proper regulation in this regard. According to the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development, the country had produced around 3.4 million tons of sugarcane in the Nepali fiscal year 2067, in fact 76-77. The production in recent time has decreased to 3.1 million tons. Likewise, farming of sugarcane, which, which used to be done in 80,000 hectares of land seven years ago, has decreased to 62,000 hectares. The production of sugarcane has also declined because of lack of irrigation facility, seeds and fertilizers. Around 30, 300,000 tons of sugar is consumed in Nepal each year. However, production has been limited to only 180,000 tons. The government had begun imposing 40% tax on the sugar imported as advised by sugar industries, citing the failure to pay the farmers due to the rise in demand of sugar, which is imported from neighboring India, Bangladesh and Pakistan, which has also affected the sale of domestically produced sugar. This has made the imported sugar expensive, while the production of sugar back home has been declining. Meanwhile, farmers in Sarlai protested demanding for an immediate announcement of the support price for sugarcane. The farmers with the support from Sugarcane Producers Association staged a protest in the streets of Horiwan demanding the government to fix the minimum support price of sugarcane for this year. They also demanded the government to provide them the subsidy amount of the sugarcane sold last year. The protest rally, which started from Hariwan's Krishna Chok, went in front of the Indu Shankar sugar mill before returning to Krishna Chok, where a protest assembly was held. The farmers protested, saying that this season's sugarcane price should be 750 rupees per quintal because of the increase in sugar price and the production costs. In our public voice segment, we have asked in several provinces regarding ways to ensure fair price for sugarcane farmers. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. विज्ञापन Direct the Kisan or Sangani Lira 
लगे बजार व्यवस्थापन कर दिए यहाँ मैक्सिम सामान बंद मसा बट तैं गए तेरी आई रह अब ते सामान अलग बीस रुपया सस्तों में अंत पाई रह मानी यहाँ को लोकल सामान कि सरकार ने रोक लगन पे Minister for Foreign Affairs NP South has said that coordination is underway with countries like Qatar and Egypt that have good bilateral relations with Hamas. Speaking to reporters upon his arrival at the Trivandrum International Airport after concluding his official visit to Qatar and Switzerland, Minister South reiterated that efforts were being made for the safe release of Nepali national Bipin Joshi from Hamas captivity. Likewise, Minister South added that bilateral discussions were being held with Russia to repatriate Nepali nationals who have been recruited in the Russian security forces. He said that a bilateral note has been sent to the Russian authority through the Nepali embassy in Moscow. Minister South had participated in the Doha summit in Qatar last Sunday and Monday and had reached Switzerland to participate in the Geneva summit for human rights. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public polls. The question is, what should be done for rapid construction of temporary shelters for the earthquake victims? Your options are A. Swift initiatives by government, B. Deploy volunteers, and C. Adequate resources. The voting is on. Type NEWS, selected option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for the international news. Three Israeli hostages mistakenly killed by Israeli soldiers in Gaza were shot dead while holding a white cloth, an Israeli military official has said. The official said the case was against their rules of engagement and an investigation was happening at the highest level. The hostages, 28-year-old Yotam Haim, 22-year-old Samir Talalka and 26-year-old Alon Shamiris were killed in Sajaya on Friday. Israeli troops have been facing stiff resistance in the area near Gaza City. The case will add further pressure on Israeli authorities to reach a deal for the release of two captives who remain in Gaza. More than 120 people remain hostage after being abducted in the Hamas attacks on October 7. The weight of their families has gripped Israel as the military carries out its offensive against Hamas. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told a news conference on Saturday evening that there would be no let-up in the Israeli operations. Netanyahu said that military pressure was necessary both for the return of the hostages and for victory and that without military pressure, Israel would, not have, would be having nothing. Hamas for its part said it had told mediators there would be no negotiations to release hostages unless the aggression against their people stops once and for all. An Israeli military official who spoke on condition of anonymity said an initial investigation by the Israel Defense Forces IDF suggested the three hostages emerged shirtless from a building with one carrying a stick with a white cloth. One of the soldiers, the official added, felt threatened as the men were at a distance of tens of meters, declared them terrorists and open fired. Two were immediately killed while the third, wounded, returned to the building. A cry for help was heard in Hebrew and the battalion commander ordered the troops to cease fire. The wounded hostages later re-emerged and were shot and killed, the official said. The hostages had uh, either been abandoned by their captors or escaped, the official has added. Meanwhile, a freed Thai hostage who was held with the three men recalled his time with them. 37-year-old Wuchian Thim Thong said he was very shocked and saddened to learn of the deaths of the men he spent nearly 50 days in captivity with. He said they had no common language, so they used hand signals to communicate and gave each other moral support. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has made comments suggesting that new negotiations were underway to recover hostages held by Hamas. The Israeli leader's comments came after Qatar confirmed talks are on, a, are on for a possible new truce. In a televised press conference, Netanyahu called the conflict an existential war that must be fought until victory. Despite pressure and costs and said Gaza would be demilitarized and under Israeli security control. His statements came a day after Israeli forces mistakenly killed three of more than 100 captives. At least 61 refugees and migrants, including women and children, have drowned following a tragic shipwreck of Libya, the International Organization for Migration, IOM, has said. 
International Organization for Migration's Libya office quotes survivors as saying the boat was carrying about 86 people. The organization's Libya office quoted survivors as saying the boat was carrying around 86. A large number of migrants are believed to have died because of high waves which swamped their vessel after it left from Zuwara on Libya's northwest coast, the IOM's Libya office has said. Libya and Tunisia are principal departure points for migrants risking dangerous sea voyages in hopes of reaching Europe via Italy. In the latest incident, most of the victims, who included women and children, were from Nigeria, Gambia and other African countries, and nearly 25 people were rescued and transferred to a Libyan detention center. A Kuwait's Emir Sheikh Nawaf al-Hamad al-Sawah has died, the Kuwait's state television has reported. He died just over three years after assuming power in the U.S.-allied Gulf oil producer. The cause of his death was not immediately disclosed. The Emir was admitted to hospital late last month because of what the state news agency described at the time as an emergency health problem, but said that he was in a stable condition. Gingerbread City takes the seaport in New York this holiday season, featuring contributions from more than 50 architecture, landscape and design offices, each offering their interpretation of sustainability in edible creations. The theme for the exhibition is climate change, in particular sea level rise and storm surges, as well as other water-related issues such as water scarcity. The Gingerbread City exhibition originated in London seven years ago and was initiated by the Museum of Architecture, a UK-based charity dedicated to promoting sustainable design ideas. This is the first year it is branching out internationally. Louise Braverman's firm contributed a piece entitled The Raindrop Art Museum. The piece features candy stairs and a water-like blue gel symbolizing how building designs can address our changing climate. And before we wrapping up, uh, let's take a look at the top stories one more time. Main day of Biva Panjami being observed amid much fanfare in Janakpur Dham today. Devotees is thronged to celebrate wedding between Ram and Sita. Winter session of the House of Representatives uncertain because of dispute related to appointment of Secretary General. Political parties yet to hold talks. Three Israeli hostages mistakenly killed by Israeli soldiers in Gaza while holding a white cloth. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu says military pressure will continue. Hamas denies negotiations unless aggression stops. And Barcelona's winless run stretches to three matches held at a one-all draw by Valencia in the Spanish La Liga. So that is all for the moment. Our next English bulletin is at 6 p.m. Thank you for staying with us. Have a beautiful day ahead.